brothers and sisters. May God bless you. Receive a warm hug in the Lord. Today, brothers and sisters, I wanted to preach to you about the value of family. This teaching is uh, due to all the difficulties that many of you are facing at home. And I want you to learn to value each other as husband and wife, as parents and children, the respect that should exist, the submission that should exist. And all of this is based on the Bible. All the experiences that we have heard that the believers live. Also for the newcomers who are beginning to listen to us, welcome to the Church of God, a church where God speaks through dreams, visions, prophecy. Whenever the services start once again in our church, we invite you to go and congregate with us to enjoy this great blessing. Last week, I spoke to you about the value of women, the value women have, how God, when He created Adam and Eve, He created Adam and allowed him to rejoice with every animal and every bird of the air. But God realized that He felt alone, that He needed a helper comparable to Him. So He took from His rib and created a woman for Him as a helper comparable to Him. And when God did this, he wanted something beautiful to be formed, which is a family, a household. And I want to talk about, about this, which is so important, which is family, harmony, peace, which is something that should exist in each and every one of our households. When a man and a woman come together, when they do it through the church or when they make the decision to live together in a civil union or when they decide to live under the same roof in the same home. Starting that moment, that is formed. A household, a family. And out of that love, children come. Out of that union, children will come. And God teaches us for example, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, it states, Submitting to one another in the fear of God. What does that mean? The fear of God. It means that we must learn to share. A marriage is not about who is in charge but learning how to share and spend time together, learning how to give in, learning so that the person who is by your side, your closest neighbor, your wife, your husband, may be happy. That's why I invite you to do that, to submit. It's not about the one who imposes things the most no it's to see the logic of the situations and with the maturity that we should all have and learning that we should submit ourselves be able to see that the other person gave a good idea because in the end when two people live together and they create that household the goal would be for both of them to be able to get ahead and be able to listen to one another and between the both of them Set goals for their future so that their future can be something that you're both happy with. And that love that you profess for one another when you form that household may continue as long for as long as you breathe. So brothers and sisters, God commands us and He tells us to submit to one another. But this is so difficult. Why is it so difficult to submit to one another? Because there's a lot of pride, a lot of vanity. There is also there are also curses, witchcraft, evil spirits. The Bible states that the entire world is ruled by the evil one, and that's why many fall into these uh, witchcrafts and sorcery. Perhaps because they haven't decided to come near to God. They truly do not want 
to devote themselves to God. They haven't decided to convert to the Lord, to submit to His gospel, to His doctrine. Therefore, we must submit. And it states, in the fear of God. What does that mean, in the fear of God? That fear of God means to obey Him, to submit to God, to be obedient. God, if we read the Bible, remember that the Bible is the written word of God. And the Bible tells us many stories about the creation of human beings, how that first household was created with Adam and Eve. But it also states that God created for himself a unique people, his special treasure. And God ordered them to multiply and how the Lord came to abolish the law of Moses so that all of us could finally learn a gospel, a doctrine that is filled with statutes, ordinances, and decrees so that you and I may submit to him. Just as in marriage, he commands us that a man and a woman, you and I, we must submit to God with all due reverence and respect towards him because he deserves all the honor and all the glory for that God who lives. The Bible states in Colossians, let us go to the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 18. Wives, the Bible states, submit to your own husbands as it's fitting in the Lord. What does that mean? That, not that women want to be slaves of men, but that they submit. And I think that women... They have that idiosyncrasy of wanting to submit to men. That's why she asked them for opinions. The problem is that there are men who ignore them. There are men who don't help them in this submission. For example, if your wife goes to buy groceries and she comes at night and tells you, Look, look at the supplies, look at everything I bought. I didn't buy this and that because it was more expensive, so instead I bought this. And you don't even look at her. You continue looking at the TV, for example. You forget that out of respect when someone speaks to you, you should look at them. That's part of loving God. That is part of giving honor to your wife. That's makes your opinion valuable to her and you should be able to tell her oh great wonderful that was some great shopping that's what we should be doing or for example when your wife dresses and they ask you oh look how i look look how i'm dressed do, do does this match with these shoes she's expecting your opinion because she wants to submit and you you should be able to tell her with great love in affection and say, oh, yes, oh, that looks really nice on you or that because women want to submit. But it seems like we, men, don't help them. Look what the Bible states in Proverbs. Let us go to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 21. In Proverbs, chapter number 21, verse 19. The word of the Lord reads, in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 19, the word of the Lord reads, Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Listen to this, women. Notice that God spoke a lot about being contentious, especially regarding women. Apparently, reading the Bible, women tend to be more contentious than men. But what does that mean, to be contentious? Where does that come from? From resentment. But why resentment? Because perhaps men have not valued their wives. He didn't get to know her. He didn't learn how to spend time with her. Because that's what a marriage is. To spend life, a life together with goals and perhaps from the very beginning, you ignored her. You ignored her opinions. You ignored her for many things that she did. And perhaps the way to defend herself was for her to become contentious, to say things and tell you things. Because maybe deep inside, there's a grudge. 
That's why when a woman is very contentious, she she creates discussions. That friendship is destroyed. There's enmity between them because the husband doesn't want to listen to her because of she's so contentious. Conflicts are created. And when a woman does not learn to be wise, to remain quiet and to be wise, we need to learn to be wise, women, and you too. Brothers, contentious men, be more prudent when you speak. Learn, think about what you're saying. Because a lot of times when we say things, we can harm people, we can hurt them. And women, when you're contentious and you, you know, talk and talk and talk, what happens? You exasperate your husband. And that's why many men, being desperate, these evil spirits come and entice them to talk back to you and also become angry and act violently. And remember, men, even though women were created from a man's rib, she is weaker. So be careful how you treat them. Be careful with being a coward, mistreating them, hitting them. Look at what we see in the news. What we have found out about. There's a lot of violence at households. That needs to end. Those are spirits. That's why it states. The contentious and angry woman. Women, be careful. Control yourself. Ask God to give you more patience. Ask God to help you. So that you may avoid these conflicts. And this manner of attacking and attacking. Because no matter how patient your husband may be. Everything has a limit. Therefore, I ask you, I urge you, women, do not fall into this mistake of being contentious. Look what it also states in verse 9. It also speaks about it. It states, better to dwell in a corner of a housetop, meaning over there, far away, in a little corner, than in a house shared with a contentious woman. Imagine that. Look at those wise, the, the, those wise advice that... We are receiving regarding practical life. And this is true. That's why men many times prefer to flee. That's why many households are destroyed. Because there's a lot of contentiousness. Because you, women, you, you fall into these things and you exasperate your husbands. Or you, men, you are also contentious perhaps. And you exasperate your wife and you begin to attack each other. And you begin to disrespect each other. And that's why... Households, families are destroyed. The Bible states in Colossians, let us go back to Colossians chapter 3, verse 19. It reads, Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. What does that mean? Husbands, love your wives. What does it mean to love? It means to not sin. So when we love, we should not we should not mistreat our neighbor, our wives. We can't humiliate them. We can't offend them. We can't be unfaithful to them. That's what it means to love them. I do not sin and I do not cause her to sin. I don't make her suffer. Why? Because I keep that first commandment. I love God above all things. But because I love God, I don't sin. And because of that love for God, I learn to love my neighbor. What better neighbor than my wife? And I strive so to make her happy and for her to feel honored as my wife. But it also states, and do not be bitter toward them. What does it mean to not be bitter toward them? Means It means do not mistreat them. Do not be so strong with them. Be careful what you say. Do not offend them. Be careful how you treat them because God is giving us this ordinance. And out of the fruit of that union of a man and a woman come children. When children are born, the woman adopts a beautiful position of becoming a mother. She begins to feel that child in her room that is on her way she begins to feel the first time the baby kicks and she feels the baby moving in her womb and that's why women adopts the child as, as their own and, oh it's, it's my child 
it's my child. And when the child is born, oh, the father is so excited. The mother is so excited. But women, you have become mothers, but you continue to be wives. There are mothers who sometimes are devoted to their children only. And you begin to abandon your husbands. You're devoted to spoiling your children, but you forget that you must also spoil your husband. Husbands, likewise, you devote yourself to spoiling your kids, but what about your wife? We must always, you must always spoil her. And you should always remain during that period of time when you fall in love with those beautiful words because that's part of loving. When it says to love, that's that brotherly love, meaning I don't sin, I don't cause anyone to sin. So I don't want to make her feel bad and I treat her well so that she may feel loved and respected. But women, we must do everything in a balanced way. Yes, we are overprotective. That's our nature as human beings. And women, they're more overprotective with their children. But so are we men. And when those children grow up, ah, so beautiful when we see them. Start, when they start crawling, when they start walking, you want to protect them. And they start crawling, you want to be with them. And when they grow, we must spend time with them because your children are going to grow. They turn three, four, five, six years old. And their parents become their heroes. But why do they become their heroes? Because you've given them a good example. Because you're showing them that love as a couple. And your children feel that love. And your children have those heroes mom and dad and that's why when mom and dad fight for a child is difficult because they love their parents so be careful brothers and sisters be careful when you begin to mistreat each other verbally or physically in front of your children you don't know how much you're harming them you to avoid all these things and if there is a problem then you talk about it but in private because those children they have an idol mom and dad so we don't want to cause them pain. And that's all part of loving. That is part of not sinning. That is part of giving joy and a good example to our children. And as you spend more time with them, for example, you got from work really tired and your child who's five, six years old and he's watching a kid's TV show. And then you take over the TV, over the remote, and you put the news or a movie, and your children, they leave. Or maybe you have another TV in another room, and your children go alone to watch their own TV by themselves. That shouldn't be so. You gotta spend time with them. That's why I'm telling you, the value of family is that, to learn to spend time together. Learn to be friends. And for you to be a friend of your wives, first and foremost, and then your children, for your children to always see in their mom and dad, man, a man and a woman who help them, who have learned to listen to them. It's not just rebuking them and correcting them. You must learn to, to hear them and to give them good advice. To teach them ever since they're little what, it, what is good and what is bad. Those of you who have little children, teach them God's path. Those of you who have older children, encourage them to seek God. Because in the end, God is the one who gives us everything. That is what we must teach them. Those of us who have known the gospel and the doctrine. If you're just starting to attend a church, you're going to have this great opportunity of knowing the living God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A God who speaks. A God who searches the mind and the heart. A God who makes promises and fulfills them. A God who teaches us to be happy as a human being. But also in a family, in a society. That's why the value of family is very important. It states, the Bible states that, let's say, if we continue to speak about family, it states that these young children, they begin to grow, and it's beautiful for you to always spend time with them, making that time for them. That as they grow, and they turn 12, 13 years old, many parents say, oh, they're in an age of rebelliousness. Brothers and sisters, Maybe they're rebellious because you never paid enough attention to them when they were younger. That's why it's never too late to spend time with them. Ask them, how did they go in school? Who are your friends? 
What do you expect about of your future? Now that you're able to spend more time during this isolation, have you spent more time with them? Have you talked more with them? I don't know, maybe have a dinner with them, have lunch, or maybe play a board game because everything is, you know, electronics now. But what have you done to spend more time with them, with your children, of creating that friendship? Have you made time for them? Because as your children grow, well, yes, I know that they become more independent, but when a child has seen that wisdom from mom and dad, they're going to always look for them. And what better advice than the one given by a father or a mother? And that's why look at this verse, verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well-pleasing to the Lord. And that's what it's all about. This path, this gospel of pleasing God in every aspect. As a man, as a woman, as a husband, as a wife, as a child. That's what the gospel is all about, of always pleasing God with our actions, with our thoughts, with the way we live and proceed, with the way we work and study, with uh, as neighbors, as citizens of a country. That's the gospel, and God has always taught virtues, good behaviors. But for that to happen... It needs to start from that which is called family, a household. You parents, you have that great responsibility before your children of forming men and women of good for the future. We know that society, the Bible states that the entire world is lost and being ruled by the enemy. But we must be different. We must be men and women of God. And it states, children, obey your parents. Obey. What better advice than that from a father and a mother? A father and a mother always want to avoid their children making mistakes in difficult situations. And we must have that ability to advise them, have that wisdom. And that's why father, mother, as you learn the doctrine, as you truly practice it in your life, God will give us that ability to be better husbands, to be better parents. It can be done. As children grow a moment will come in which children will also depart from our side and they're going to get married and they're going to become independent and they're going to continue in that path with someone else, another person. And then once again, another unity, another household, another family is going to be formed. So young men and women, the youth who are getting married, learn to tolerate each other too. And to your parents, always tell them the good things because there are certain things that should be handled in a household internally between the both of you. Correct each other, but many grow up and know something. We're always going to be a parent. It doesn't matter if the child is 50 years old. We will always rejoice over the triumphs, but we will also cry and be worried over the difficulties that each and every one of our children live. That's why children, or those of you who are young, the youth, learn as you grow up and when you reach a certain age, certain maturity, always tell your parents good things. Oh, that if you need some advice because you've seen that your father and your mother they are wise, well, great, talk to them. But don't take your problems of your household to them because that's going to create conflicts and misunderstandings. No, later with your spouse, you will fix your difficulty but because there might be some resentment afterward between families. Therefore, I invite you. There are certain things like some people say, you know, to our, our parents. No, let's give them good news. And then you're going to understand later on everything a parent does. When you become a parent, everything that we've done for you, our children. Perhaps there are children who are very forgetful. There are children who forget all of the effort that a parent makes. And that's why... They go and they live in a different country. They learn a different language and you prepare yourself. But yeah, we're, but where did all that effort come from? Didn't that come from your parents? And with God's help, you were able to succeed in life. But don't be ungrateful. Don't despise your parents. No, always pay attention to them. And then it talks about some great advice for parents for, towards their children. It states, fathers, do not provoke your children. In verse 21, and what does this mean? That be careful. 
because there are different ways to speak to our children. There are parents that want to be too dominating, but we must learn to have a conversation. If you have good communication, if you're able to talk well to each other, your children are going to learn to respect you, to obey you. But there are parents that are very, very hyperactive and they want to impose themselves on each of their children. So as it states here, you end up provoking them. And when your child is provoked, they don't know what to do and they get upset. And when a child gets upset, then they become full of wrath. And that's why they go against their parents and they talk back to them and they just disrespect them and all of that. Young men and women, God is not pleased with that. But who caused this? You, father or mother, because you became, as we read earlier, contentious. Because you lacked wisdom. Because you didn't talk to them. And you become desperate as a father or mother and you want to impose something on them. But we need to learn to talk to them and learn to know your children so that you do not provoke your children so that you don't lose that respect. That's why we must be patient. We as parents are always going to be overprotective of our children and that's our nature. But children, learn to understand your parents. Be patient with them. And you parents, learn to love your children and learn to talk to your children so that you never provoke them and so that your children may always listen to your advice. That is the best advice, the one from a father or a mother. It states in the Bible in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, it states in verse number 1, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Apostle Paul stated, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. No, you, if you're listening to me for the first time, if you're listening to me, it's because God is calling you to this, to this path. It's because God wants you to know that He lives, that He exists, that He's not far away, that He promised. The Lord said that it was necessary for Him to leave to send us the other Helper, the Holy Spirit of Truth, who would be with us. But the most beautiful blessing is that He's going to be in us, in our hearts, in our thoughts. And God wants that. And God wants you and me to have a calling. That calling of being true children of God, obedient to Him, fearing Him, for you and I to truly give the best that we have to offer towards Him, so that in that way, God may say, this person whom I have called, I will choose him so that he may attain that great gift from God, eternal life. And for that, we must be a good father, we must be a good child, we must be a good wife, we must be a good husband. All of this is because we have a calling to please God. And we must please God every second, every instant. And that's why it's so important to read the Bible. It's so important to truly seek the things of God with a sincere heart. How important it is to ask God for a sound mind. How important it is to be sensible with God and say, God, we want to please you. We want to be happy. We want we want there to be peace and harmony in this family. But for that, we must prepare our hearts, desire it, want it. Just as we read in verse 2, with all lowliness and gentleness. What does it mean with lowliness? That is the way that we act, the way we give in, the way that we humble ourselves, the way we submit to one another, to submit, to not be contentious, to avoid conflicts. That is what God wants. With all lowliness, this lowliness has nothing to do with material things, poverty. No, it has to do with the way that you are, the way that you act. Not with arrogance or haughtiness or pride. And it states in gentleness. And gentleness, meaning 
be obedient. Be a, an obedient man, an obedient woman, an obedient child. That's what God wants. That you treat others with gentleness. The way that you express. How do you act? How do you say things? Because that is what God wants. And that is the calling that you and I have. To be lowly. To be gentle. And look what else it states. With long suffering, bearing with one another. What does it mean with long suffering, bearing with one another? Well, it means that you can't make everyone be the way that you are. Because you're a father or a mother and be the way you are. No, or you a child. No, everyone has their own personality, the way, their own way of thinking. Therefore, let us learn to bear with one another. Understanding that every person has their own personality. The way that they are, which brings us together. What brings us together is that love for God. Loving God brings us together. Knowing this God we have because we have the same calling. That we want to please Him. Because we think about eternal life. We think about spending our life together here on earth. But also there with Him. Here in this first heaven. But for this to be a first heaven, God must dwell with us. But we have that promise of that spiritual paradise, that second heaven and third heaven in order to live eternally with Him. And that is why it states, bearing with one another in love. That's why we must avoid sin at all costs. Be careful with the way that you act, the way you answer, the way you speak. With your gestures. Always do your best to please your neighbor. And when you do your best to please your neighbor, you treat him well with humility, with lowliness and gentleness, learning to bear with one another, with long suffering. God is going to be pleased with that because that long suffering is something that we must learn to not be offensive, to not complain so much. Because when people complain so much, they haven't learned to have long suffering. We can't all be like children. We can't want everything now the way we want. Everything has a time. We can't rebel against God. We must stay calm in order to be men and women full of wisdom, good parents, good children. That's why be careful when you speak. And finally, I want to conclude with something. The value of family in the Lord means that there's a true friendship. That true friendship between husband and wife. For you to truly know your wife and make her happy, learn to know your children. And children, learn to know your parents. Give the best that you have to offer. Let there be good comprehension. Learn to talk to each other. Give in. Look, during this time, how long have we been confined in this quarantine if we need to ask for forgiveness ask for it but show it with works with good deeds recognize that maybe we've made mistakes but things can change there's still time my brothers and sisters we can still do this man women try strive to be happy strive to keep that friendship that comprehension so that God can see that you do value what it means to have a family in the Lord. Because if you learn to love one another, to tolerate one another in a family, when you're in the midst of a community, you're going to do it also. And God is going to be pleased with you. And God is going to bless you. That is why, my brothers and sisters, it can be done. You can be good husbands. You can be good wives. You can be good parents. You can be good children. We can have a great friendship and understanding among all of us. Let us fight for that. That is why let us pray and let us say, God of glory, good Father, bless our families so that there may be peace, harmony, and good understanding. Destroy all witchcraft, incantations, spells, every spirit of contention and wrath Lord help us be happy as husbands as parents as children give us always that good sense to love you and to submit to one another help us 
so we may always understand your gospel and your doctrine. Continue healing, O Lord. Extend your powerful arm and heal everyone from any illness, no matter, no matter how incurable it is. But heal our soul. Deliver us from those witchcrafts and sorceries, incantations, spells that don't allow us to be happy, O Lord. Help us financially. Look at all the debt and commitments that we have. Look, O oh Lord, how many during this time have lost their jobs. Open doors for them, Lord. How many are failing in their companies and their businesses, their stores? Lord, help them. Help us so we can restore all this and continue forward with our businesses. Lord, look at all the debt and commitments, O oh Lord. Help us be wiser to administer whatever much or little money we receive to always give you the glory and the honor in our love lives. Help so that that love between couples may exist and our love for children. Or maybe some are single or widows. Lord, fulfill the desires in our heart. Spiritually speaking, Lord, deliver us so that we may love you. Deliver us, O oh Lord, so we may always have that thirst and hunger of you the spiritual things and desire the spiritual gifts desire to serve you to receive the spiritual gifts but also to always desire to attain eternal life our sister Mary Luisa wherever she may be O oh Lord keep her safe bless her give her many years of life Lord what a wonderful leader we have what great teaching she gives us Lord continue blessing her in your church worldwide continue making it shine look we desire to conquer it once again for now, we're enjoying this great blessing of seeing our sister Mary Luisa during the teaching services and the reflections. Lord, help us enjoy these moments. But above all, everyone who is new, the newcomers, those who desire to receive prophecy, Lord, allow our congregations to be open soon so we can congregate once again as brothers and sisters to glorify and exalt you. But for now, the church has moved to our homes. And our homes... As a family, we may have that opportunity to continue hearing your teachings and praise you and read the Bible, O good Father, and get nearer to you. Lord, have mercy of the world. Have mercy of this world so that this pandemic may end finally. Lord, so that that vaccine may be found, that they can find that vaccine, or that you may allow this virus to disappear because we all understand clearly that this is a punishment from God. We deserve it. Human beings have forgotten about you. Human beings, they have been foolish in their thoughts. They have forgotten to give you the glory and the honor. But Lord, during these times, when the world is lost, you have given us an opportunity to know you. That is why, O oh Lord, have mercy of all human beings and of all of us and help us to always get ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen.